All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Jim Kirk. I'm, I'm group publisher and uh, executive editor of Crane Chicago Business and welcome. Uh, this is the information session for the Chicago Leadership Circle. This is a joint initiative for those who don't uh, know all the details uh, between Crane Chicago Business and the University of Chicago Graham School. And you'll hear from me as well as a couple of other people, notably uh, Seth Green, who is my partner in crime here, who is the Dean of the Graham School. Uh, this uh, just a little bit of a, a welcome uh, and kind of overview. You know, uh, we got together with uh, Seth and the Graham School a, a, a more, little more than a year ago, to, uh, both with kind of a shared vision about how to, uh, you know, it, it, both of our institutions are invested in this city in, in a major way. You know, from the Crane's perspective, you know, obviously beyond the, the news that we report on a daily basis, you know, part of our mission is to make sure that uh, we are providing uh, service to our readers uh, and those who engage with us uh, to to help them succeed, uh, not only in their careers, but really as as citizens of this great city. And that's really the genesis of this program. And Seth will really uh, kind of uh, highlight uh, next with the program overview. So I just wanted to welcome everyone here. Uh, we have a really terrific program uh, slated for, for the upcoming year and uh, we are we're really glad that you want to be uh, uh, that you're interested in, in being part of it. So with that, I will hand it over to Seth and uh, where he can go into detail. Great. Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Uh, as Jim mentioned, I'm Seth Green. I'm the dean at the Graham School at the University of Chicago, and we are the home of lifelong learning and leadership for the university. And we, like Jim mentioned, have a deep stake in Chicago too. Obviously, our university is here. Uh, and we, as a university, do a lot of research that really harnesses the unique opportunities and challenges of Chicago as a case study to better understand the world. And so we're a place with a deep commitment to the city, as well as a deep involvement in the city. And as we were talking with Cranes, we really felt that there was an opportunity, especially at this pivotal moment for our region, to think about how we bring together our intellectual assets to develop something that combines leadership development, better understanding social and economic issues, and a real focus on the future for success for our region. And so that led to the Chicago Leadership Circle, which is supporting executives in better understanding, shaping, and engaging with the region's economic and community development. And each of those are very meaningful parts of the experience. We really want people to get a 360 lens and we wanna go beyond the headlines and deeply know the issues that are taking place here. We then wanna talk about how do you shape them? How do you play a role through your business or institution as well as individual leadership in making a difference? And then how do you stay engaged in a sustained way with the region's future? And so the purpose of this circle is to inspire executives that we can understand and confront these major issues that face our region. We want to investigate the issues in a deep and rigorous way in the spirit of the university's mission and Crane's journalism. And then we want to connect our great faculty and Crane's journalists with the next generation of responsible business and community leaders. And what we hope you'll have at the end of this fellowship is four outcomes, a deeper understanding of these issues affecting Chicago, meaningful relationships with others who share your commitment to its future, a vision for how you build shared value, and I'll come back to what that means when we talk about the Capstone Project, where you'll look at how you could develop a project in your company that would actually have benefit for your company and the region at the same time, and then a roadmap for advancing those aims. I'll just share that the core academic idea behind this is that we would bring together what you might consider to be three different lenses on this region, uh, as you might expect from the University of Chicago, an academic lens. How would we look at this topic of crime or how would we look at housing or education from the perspective of academic research and with a focus on Chicago, but also with comparisons to other cities across the world? With a journalistic lens, how would a Cranes journalist investigating this issue try to deeply understand it and report on it? 
And what are the different ways that different stakeholders are looking at this issue? And then finally, a practitioner lens in two ways. One, practitioners who are role models in being business leaders who are civically minded and who are moving the needle. And two, practitioners who are working in other sectors who might be partners for business executives wanting to make a difference in these areas. I'll just share that we did have a first pilot cohort and we'll talk to two members of that cohort over the last academic year. And it was a huge success because of the people around this initiative. Uh, here on screen, you can see some of the incredible instructors and guest speakers. On the left, you have Rosanna Ander, who is the leader of our crime lab and education lab here at the university. Below her, you have Samir Mayakar, who is the lead managing director of the Polsky Center here at the university and was the deputy mayor. You have Robert Vargas next to Rosanna, who is a professor of sociology here. Then next to him, you have Betsy Ziegler, CEO of 1871. Then Gian Foreman, uh, you have John Pletz from Cranes, uh, who was at each meeting and really helped to really bring together the insights uh, of journalists around this. And then at the bottom, you have Arnie Duncan and Andy Zopp, uh, two leaders who perhaps need no introduction. Uh, and these are eight of the more than 35 people that came to visit with the fellows over the course of the academic year and really energize the curriculum. And this year we will continue to have such amazing people. Uh, but one of the points of feedback from our pilot cohort is that it was really exciting to have so many different vantage points and to have different people visiting each session but it would really help to have someone who's helping to weave content, who has a global perspective across all of the different domains of these economic and community development issues. And we were very fortunate, Michael Fashnot is writing a monthly piece for Cranes. Uh, he's finished his formal role as CEO of World Business Chicago and now is a leader in the private sector, but he remains very committed on these issues and offered to serve as the lead facilitator where he will be a distinguished instructor, regularly coming in with many lectures, He'll be doing interviews, but he'll also be charged with weaving the content across all of these amazing people and sessions together. So we're really excited to say that the 2.0 version will continue to have amazing people from across our city with a weaver who's really able to bring it all together and connective tissue across all of those sessions. So let's talk about what the sessions are. Each month you look deeply at an issue that matters to Chicago's economic and community development future. And we start by understanding the city. And this understanding brings together three different lenses. We look from the lens of history. So how did these things develop over time and why? From politics, what are the major issues from a citizen and demographic and change perspective? And then from business leaders, and it turns out that each of these may have a very distinct route. And it might be that the business leaders are very concerned about the debt burden and taxes. And in politics, we'll hear about why there is such concern about pensions and making sure they stay. And so what these different lenses do is they help to weave together a story that really lets you understand the full 360 view of what's happening today in Chicago. Once we provide that, we see this session and it's day long as a foundation, we then jump into individual spheres that we think are really important for business leaders who want to have an impact positively on Chicago to know about. And we start by understanding Chicago's economy and really understanding both how it's changed. So how we've gone from a significant manufacturing to an advanced manufacturing, but at a smaller scale, how we've begun to build a tech sector that is vibrant, how we're playing now, and we'll talk to Ben Kant about this, in areas like quantum. So we'll look at all of those major trends and really understand where are we today, where are we headed in the future. We'll then begin to look into the other areas that intersect with that economy in really meaningful ways. Our built environment, both real estate and transportation, which are obviously highly related in a world where people really want transit-based development. We will look at the education system. And by that, we mean cradle to college. We will center it around CPS, but we will also be talking about higher ed, which remains a tremendous opportunity for our region. 
and we'll look at early as well. We'll talk about the public safety issues that remain at the forefront of every single poll about whether or not people move to or move out of Chicago, as well as how other cities like New York and Los Angeles have handled these issues. We'll then look at how, if you have taken in all of these issues and you've become interested in impacting them, you can actually do so. We'll look at public-private partnerships as an example of how business and social sector often work together to address these large interconnected issues. And then we'll look individually at how individuals can be a business and civic leader in this city, taking after incredible examples like the Jim Crowns who are no longer with us, but whose legacies continue to influence how we look at what civic leadership is in this city. So that is a whirlwind tour of the types of topics that we're gonna be engaging in. And then what you will be expected to do at the end of this is you'll be expected to put together a capstone presentation where you share what you see as a win-win. What we're building up to is giving you enough knowledge about all of these issues that you and your peers begin to see, you know what, if our business were to hire, let's say second chance where people who might be ex-offenders are given an opportunity in relevant areas where it's believed to be safe, then we could actually be part of helping to address public safety. Or if our company, which is planning a relocation, were to move into this area of the built environment, we could really reinforce a positive impact on the transportation system. So the aim is for you to think about across all of these issues, where might there be intersections between what you're working on to make sure your business or institution thrives and what the city needs for its future? So you might be saying, well, that sounds really interesting, but what does this actually look like in practice? And rather than us tell you that piece, we thought you should hear from two people that were actual guinea pigs in being our first cohort. Uh, Carrie Crane is the vice president of the Gilbane building company, and it should be Kratz. So we will update this slide. I'm looking at you, Carrie, and I do know your name. Uh, so apologies for that. Uh, and Venkan, Venkanta Krishnan is the director of research at Discovery Partners Institute. Uh, and I'm going to take down my screen because I want to see both of you. There we go. Hello to both of you. How are you? Good. Thanks. Thanks. Well, so to get started, um, so people in the room know who you are, can you each just give a brief introduction, you know, kind of give a little bit about your professional background, and then maybe why you decided to join the inaugural cohort of the Chicago Leadership Circle? Uh, yeah, uh, Venkat, can we start with you? Uh, yes. Um, hi, uh, my name is uh, Venkat Venkatakrishnan. I am the director of research of uh, Discovery Partners Institute, which is uh, an institute under the University of Illinois system uh, that looks at talent development, uh, applied research and development, and business building. Of those three verticals, I'm the director of research at DPI, and the, the, the overall DPI mission is equitable economic development. So um, this is uh, also the reason I got uh, interested in the program in the first place last year. And in, as part of the DPI mission, what we do is to work with uh, scientists from across the, uh, the greater Chicago academic network uh, to uh, bring in more uh, federal funding to Chicago, uh, to uh, initiate more academia industry partnerships, and to build out you know, startups and other spin-offs from academic institutions. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a growing ecosystem here that DPI is, is part of and uh, happy to uh, talk about uh, how my experiences in the program uh, helped with uh, my job at DPI in the course of this conversation. Wonderful. Thank you, Venkat. And just because I see into this a little bit from my spot at the university, I'll acknowledge Venkat is being modest. Um, he has been at the center of bringing over $100 million to our region for that work as the principal investigator and the coordinator. So thank you for what you've already done for our region, Venkat. And uh, Carrie, I know you are the lead business for Chicago for Gilbane, and oversee a team of more than 250. Um, yeah, can you just tell a little bit about your role and then 
uh, also why you decided to participate in the cohort. Absolutely. So you are correct, um, Seth. I, I lead a team um, for Gilbane Building Company, our Chicago office. Um, we are a national full service building firm. Um, we are a 154 year old uh, family owned, family run company um, with offices across uh, 40 states. So, uh, but I lead our Chicago office. Um, and uh, we are very much a community builder. Um, we pride ourselves on building more than buildings and um, really look to engage in community and how we can, um, you know, be stewards of uh, workforce development, of building the future of any of the communities where our office are, offices uh, lie. And uh, when I took uh, the leadership position of our Chicago office, I'm not from Chicago originally. Um, I came from uh, New England, from the Connecticut and the East Coast. And when I came to Chicago, it was clear to me that um, I had a lot of catching up to do. So much uh, has happened in the city of Chicago. Um, and I'm just, I'm like a student of Chicago. Let's put it that way. I'm fascinated by the by the community here, the business community here, and I'm excited on um, the places uh, where it will build forward for the future, um, but really joined the program and, and joined the cohort um, so that I could better my understanding of a little bit of the history, um, policy history, community history in Chicago, and take that forward in the things uh, that we're building here from an economic development perspective. Um, and also, you know, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed engaging with my diverse cohort um, that allowed me to build network and connections here as well. Well, wonderful. Maybe, Carrie, I can come back to you um, and ask the first question for, for both of you, which is, you know, how did this shape your perspective on Chicago? And maybe, you know, you could share a couple examples or highlights of where you had aha moments during the academic year. And, and so, Carrie, we'll take your thoughts first on this and then and then Ben Khan. Um, so I'll just start by saying that I learned just as much from the content um, that was presented and all of the fantastic um, guest speakers and, and folks that came in to engage with us and give us their perspective and their areas of expertise and focus. I learned just as much from them as I did from my very diverse cohort, which who like they all had many of them from Chicago um, had additional information and content um, to share. And it became this roundtable discussion um, that that looked at things very dynamically from a number of different perspectives, whether it was community, people who are doing community-based work, people that are working in not-for-profit, people that are working in for-profit organizations. Um, and so I would say that uh, from my perspective, I, I, I kind of came expecting to learn from the prepared content. And I was, I was just pleasantly surprised at how much I learned um, from the cohort itself. Um, and I would say that um, some of the things that really uh, I got a much better understanding on um, was specifically surrounding housing, housing policy, housing development. Um, we do a, a lot of housing um, uh, building uh, across the nation. Um, and so I really loved seeing sort of intersecting things from different geographies, what has worked, uh, what is what has, um, you know, shaped things in uh, negative trajectories. Um, and then compared it and contrasted it to other areas where things have moved, you know, housing uh, forward in a more productive manner, especially related to affordable housing um, and uh, in learning as much as I could from the cohort around me as well. Uh, and then can I place the same question to you, especially given you have a different kind of industry and potential vantage point? Um, yes, um, I, I mean, I've been in um, Chicago for the last, you know, 20 years. Um, and and so um, I I I came into the program broadly to learn more, but I think you know um, given that my work already touches many spheres of economic development, uh, what attracted me to the agenda was the somewhat broader civic canvas that was uh, framed around all the issues, and so uh, that together with the uh, with the cohort of uh, very interesting people. Um, uh, executives from very different verticals, industry verticals, nonprofits, um, and of course uh, the the speakers and the um, and the panelists uh, that made for uh, that made me understand better sort of the connectedness between the different issues that we discussed. It wasn't like one session that looked at you know housing was so different from 
uh, it was but but it also allowed me to appreciate how many of these big picture problems are also interconnected and uh, that was a big education in itself and uh, i really liked the the sessions that i not don't normally come across things like housing uh, the 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 transportation system education uh, in addition to all the other things that i'm very familiar with including uh, building of public private partnerships the tech ecosystem all the conversations there uh, but but i was just uh, i just gained a lot from sort of the broader civic discourse about the city and how uh, how to even you know uh, think about uh, framing the problems and challenges that chicago has from a broader civic lens so um, that was fantastic yeah well, so we aim for CLC to be a learning and leadership journey. And you both described a lot of your learning. And I want to pivot to the leadership side. Each of you worked on a capstone project where you were thinking about, how do I take this knowledge and apply it in the context of the work that I do? And so um, can we start this time with you, Venkat? Uh, do you want to just briefly kind of snapshot your capstone project and then Carrie will turn to you um yes I think my capstone project and this was you know something that I was already starting to work on as I I mean just starting to work on as I joined the cohort uh, was the establishment of a cannabis research Institute in um, Chicago and it is sort of the first of its kind uh, and it is now uh, successfully established at DPI and it also during the course of this program, uh, I wrote out the charter, uh, got the buy-in from various, you know, university entities. As you know, uh, cannabis has a has an interesting place in the uh, in the in the ecosystem. It is uh, it's still federally illegal, uh, but you know the adult use has been made legal in the state. And so I had to walk through a number of interesting, you know, challenges in establishing this institute. But where the program really helped um, me frame. Uh, uh, some of the agenda for this institute was in the social equity, uh, the perspectives that were, um, you know, discussed. And and so uh, one of the things that we have done in the three pillars of the Cannabis Research Institute is firmly establish uh, social equity as as one of the well, three pillars, the others being medical, medicinal, and agriculture, which are, of course, uh, very important for the cannabis industry, but also um, uh, first class, third pillar uh, on, on social equity. And now we have a a cannabis institute director in place, uh, seven million dollars in funding in place. So all this happened during the course of the program and the conversations that I had with many of the cohorts and what I learned in the program helped me um, considerably in framing the charter for this institute. And uh, so that was my capstone project. Yeah. Well, that is a great example. And Carrie, can we hear yours? Sure. Very different, uh, very different topic. And I think that that was the beauty of uh, listening and hearing and and um, being able to collaborate on our capstone projects. So my capstone project uh, really focused on uh, creating intersectionality between construction workforce development, mental health um, in our youth in our and in our construction, our future construction workers and, edu and the ed educational system um, that uh, most of of our future construction workers are, are moving through and into, um, into the industry in um, very siloed, uh, very siloed efforts happening in each one of those, uh, those pieces of work um, and looking at the places where we can break down the silos across them and create holistic approaches to, um, to tackle challenges and, and barriers to entry for workforce development um, across all three of those lines. Um, and so uh, works, uh, uh, quite a bit and, and got some really great feedback um, from there was there was actually several members of our cohort that were doing work actually you know active work um, in the workforce development space maybe not construction uh, in construction workforce uh, specific um, but got to pick their brains on places that we could break down those silos and take a new approach um, to build a stronger construction workforce for the future. Well, so I have one final question for you now, and then we're going to open it up after Conway shares logistics to the full audience for Q&A. Uh, I want to hear from each of you, you know, how does this shape your future? So you have your projects, each of you have taken those very seriously and you're moving those forward. But, you know, how now that this is complete, would you say 
that the curriculum and network that you went through and developed over the course of the year might inform your leadership and business endeavors into the future. Uh, Carrie, can we come back to you as the starting place for this? Absolutely. Um, so I would say that the the first one, and it's pretty obvious to point to, is the is the network and connections, right? Is uh, you know over the course of time, right, building that that really clear dialogue and also bu building some business to business relationships throughout the the cohort time that continue on, right, and will continue um, to be uh, you know thought leaders together, right, where we can. Uh, we could have uh, people in our Rolodex to go to, to bounce our challenges off of and say, I'm working on this, or this is the next step of, of what I want to do um, to focus on uh, these pieces of, of community facing um, solutions. And, you know, I would say that that for me is, is probably the place where um, I will leverage the cohort or the, the process, the program uh, to its fullest extent in the future. Great. Final words, Venkat? Yeah, I, I already talked about the learning bit, so I'll I'll maybe talk about the cohort and the larger um, um the larger lesson. So the the cohort, I am happy to say that I already I'm starting to do some real business work with a couple of the uh, co you know members of the cohort. You know, we are putting out uh, some partnerships between our respective organizations and starting to uh, put out some uh, proposals that. Uh, are being considered over this summer. So happy about that. And also uh, there has been some informal chit chat in some subgroup about getting the cohort together in the fall, just as an informal meeting. And I offered, um, you know, to host uh, one or uh, more of these sessions at, at DPI. Um, so that, you know, so I am hoping that this network will continue to uh, to, to to collaborate and uh, and 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 move forward. Um, on 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 a slightly larger canvas, I'm writing out a five year plan for my organization, uh, strategic plan, and uh, the things that I have uh, learned from uh, this program are helping me in shaping uh, the different aspects of the 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 Chicago's economic development agenda that uh, DPI is uniquely positioned to tackle. Uh, so uh, so I I find the experiences informing me as I chart out every page of this uh, strategic plan. Yeah. Well, you both are role model examples of what was a spectacular first cohort. Thank you for being our kind of co-owners of this as members of the first and helping to really not only be incredible participants, but also providing generative feedback for us. Uh, and with that, we've hopefully interested you in this program. And so I'm going to turn it over to Conway who is our lead at the university for this initiative. And Conway, I'll let you share more about the logistics application process and beyond. Uh, and then after all of this, we'll come back for Q&A, uh, both for Conway and I, as well as Carrie and Venkat and Jim. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, but Conway, let me turn it over to you. Thank you, Seth. Just share my screen here. Give me a moment. Okay, um, my name again is J.M. Conway and I'm a manager of innovation programs here at the University of Chicago Graham School. Um, just a little bit on the program format. We are a once monthly in-person program. Um, we meet over the course of eight months. Um, primarily downtown in the Gleacher Center on evenings from 4 to 7 p.m. Central. And these sessions um, begin with an opening lecture from faculty or business leader on the history or context of the subject for the month. We typically then have a panel of Crane's journalists and practitioners on the topic and then time for guided discussion um, and um, conversation about insights and understanding on each topic. Um, again, most sessions are held downtown at the Gleacher Center, but we have made some space and time for some site visits and other opportunities as uh, applicable throughout the year. This is going to give you another overview of the monthly sessions. 
Um, I will call out that the first ses session in October is on a Saturday and it is a full day session. Um, that day is a day where we revisit um, the aims and the goals of the program overall, as well as provide some opportunity to begin um, the networking um, and team building aspects of the year. And so we mix those agenda items with also a start to the um, academic and journalistic and journalistic uh, components of the program. So half of the day is meant to be time to refresh you on the program itself, an opportunity to mix and mingle with each other as a cohort and start to build those bonds. And then we jump into uh, the content of understanding Chicago history, politics, and business. And then you'll see the dates and times for the rest of our year together. Just again, to touch on the capstone, at the completion of the first seven months that we are together, that last session that we have is an opportunity for you as a fellow to share on your capstone project that you will have time to think about and craft over the course of the first few months of the program. It's a short presentation where you're sharing about an issue that matters to you, your institution, and or the future of Chicago. And you're really sharing with us, you know, based on your analysis and what you've learned in the program, what you've learned from your peers, how can this issue be addressed in a meaningful and sustainable way? And how you have, what, what are your ideas on what that um, solution uh, could be. Just a little bit about the application. It, there is a, a short application. Uh, we are hoping to welcome between 20 and 25 fellows for the upcoming year of this program. Um, in addition to some contact information, we do ask for your LinkedIn site, or if you have another professional website, we ask for that information. We ask a little bit of detail and history on your professional experience. And then there is a short set of questions. There are three questions that ask you to think about what you might get out of the program. What do you see as um, pressing challenges and opportunities for the city? And a few other questions that will help us get your information and uh, look at your application holistically. We're asking that applications be turned in by August 16th. Um, and the program price is $9,500 with some um, modest um, scholarship opportunities available, which you can uh, indicate your interest or need uh, for, uh, for a scholarship in the application. Um, I I'm going to actually stop there um, and then pull up everyone's screen so we can have time for your questions about the program, um, should you have them. We've got about um, 10 minutes or so left. We try to leave time uh, for you to get ready for your next meetings, as we know this is a for most people, a lunchtime uh, gathering. So Again, questions, you can put them in the chat. You can use the function here that says raise hand that you should see at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Or um, you can, uh, if you want to come on video, uh, use a real hand as well. Uh, yeah, John, uh, I'm going to unmute you and we'd love to hear your question. And if you're open to it, um, you know, just uh, share a tiny bit about who you are. Hi, everybody. Uh, John Diggles, lifelong Chicagoan. Uh, I have a, I own a company in Chicago. Uh, it's important for me to produce, uh, create jobs in Chicago. So I looked at this. Uh, I looked at this offering last year. I know this was the inaugural offering. I couldn't do it with my work schedule. Um, but I am, you know, I am looking at it again. Can you tell me tell all of us, what are some things that you learned from doing it the first time that you sort of fine tune the program and you're taking into this, this next cohort, please. 
Yeah, so I mean, maybe I'll start, but I want to welcome Jim and Conway and, and our participants because they shared many of these points of feedback. Um, one is that this was a whirlwind tour and we brought together lots of different viewpoints and those were both valued, but then there comes the but. It would be useful to have a unifying framework that wove across. And that's the piece that we didn't have that consistency on. And one thing that excites us about Michael Fashnot is he's really played almost every role. Uh, he's a bit of uh, one of those individuals who somehow jumps across every sector successfully. And as a result, um, he really is familiar with all of the political leaders, all of the economic leaders, a lot of the academics, and really can be a weaver. And so we're really excited about that addition, which we think will enhance. Um, the second thing that we heard was that there was really incredible conversation in the cohort. That happened organically. So you heard both Carrie and Venkat say one of the greatest values was one another, but we didn't do as much to structure that. It happened organically. And what we heard in the survey is that they filled out, and I'll, I'll turn it over to them too to share, was that if we did even more to structure it, both by having more social time. So we showed you the formal time, but actually one thing that's baked in is social time after a number of those four to seven gatherings where we get a bar, we get another kind of social place where you can really connect, that that could even further. This is what happened even without us really structuring. With that, we can even amplify it further. So those are a couple, but let me turn it over to everyone else here for what they saw in Carrie and Venkat's case and Conway as our leader who culled a lot of that data and Jim as our partner. I could just... I'll just chime in and say that's that was uh, one of the the things that kind of we kind of grew into as the program went on, right? But it didn't happen till you know kind of midway through the program. So pulling that back, uh, I think Conway the the idea was to create more space for that earlier on in the because once that organic you know that organic time grew into and those relationships started to develop, our dialogue became more dynamic um, and and you know, more useful as, as leaders, right? So um, pulling that back uh, earlier in the program um, to provide space for it, we thought was important. Any other, yeah, Venkat? Oh, I, I think uh, this is, it's a brilliant, you know, idea to have uh, Michael Fasnat integrate, um, you know, all of these uh, threads, you know? I mean, as I said before, I could see the connections, you know, uh, but I think, uh, as as a program, if there was facilitated um, connections between the individual sessions, I think that would be even even better, right? So great, yeah. Uh, so we have a question in the chat uh, from Melissa Chalice. As you explore the economy, transportation, and public safety, do you get into community health care, accessibility to pay, et cetera, at all? Um, I mean, maybe I'll just briefly say that uh, we don't have an explicit and exclusive focus, but community healthcare would come up in each of those spheres. And I do think as we get into public-private partnership, that that is actually one of the places where you see a lot of those partnerships. So, I mean, I think of Westside United as an example that we could definitely highlight. So um, it's not formally, but I think you will have case studies that actually are in that space because it's the intersection, as you say, Melissa, of all of these different topic areas. Um, and apologies, as I was reading that question, Conway, I noticed you might have a comment on the last question we had, so I wanna make sure. Oh yes, just to say that um, the other piece that we're building in more formally this year is more touch points to talk with the your fellows, your cohort about your capstone idea so that you can have some cross collaboration and thinking together with the larger group um, so that you're not as in a vacuum um, as you're thinking about that capstone project. So there'll be more touch points throughout the program year where you really get to sit with your thought about the capstone and sit with the rest of the fellows to be in conversation about that. Um, and then I also see a hand. Um, I'm going to try in Didi. Perfect, actually. Okay. <laughs> I'm tickled because that doesn't always happen. Uh, okay, a little bit about myself. So my name is Ndidi Okapu. Um, I've been work. I've been in Chicago for half my life. 
um, working in civic spaces, organ uh, background in organizing and advocacy in Black and Brown communities and Muslim spaces as well, um, and working very actively in the um, in the in the civic community in that regards. And I, um, through my work in advocacy, I uh, opened a, a consulting firm, management consulting firm, where we support the needs of those community organizations that help keep Chicago running. So hopefully that's a good explanation or yeah. quick bio. Um, my questions were, and I was coming out of a meeting, but hopefully they're, you know, they're on their they'll work. But one was like the candidates that you're looking for. Like I feel like I heard a little bit about the benefits for the participants and the fellows and what you're trying to accomplish. But what I what candidate is a good fit or align with what you're trying to accomplish with this uh, next cohort. And then the second question is kind of like, what is your end game? So I know that like there's, you know, potential partnerships come out of this networks and things, but is there going to be like a repository of the information and the lessons learned? And, and um, will there be, um, or are you just trying to have this huge network? Like what are, what's kind of like the, uh, the end game with this? Thank you. Yeah, those are awesome questions. I mean, maybe just to start with who, uh, which we actually should have had a slide on. So uh, this is that iterative process that gets us better over time. It's executives at institutions or companies that have a significant economic and community development influence on Chicago. And so, you know, what you described as being a leader of a firm that is working with a lot of organizations that are advancing community development. That could be an example. It could be, you know, an executive at one of our big companies, uh, McDonald's, you know, William Blair, et cetera, where they're having an influence. It could be someone like, you know, Venkat, who is leading a research institute that drives over $100 million to Chicago. So those are some of the types of examples. And the key things are leadership role at an institution or business that is a part of moving the needle for Chicago, because what we want in that conversation is for people to be thinking in the ways that Carrie and Venkat both described of scalable, meaningful projects that can change our region, whether the cannabis example and social equity or the workforce development example. Um, and then in terms of the end game, I mean, I wanna turn over to our partners at Crane since this is a joint initiative. I'll say for the university, you know, we want to put our intellectual assets in the hands of people that are gonna make a difference for Chicago. So I would say that there are certainly a lot of scholarly efforts where we wanna publish and we wanna put out new knowledge in the world. But the way we've approached this particular endeavor is more as a way to share knowledge and then see the people who we're providing that knowledge to being the change makers, if that makes sense. Um, so what's happening when Ben Khan and Carey describe their projects is really the core of what we're aiming to. I do think that over time, what we anticipate is that you're a fellow for good, meaning the two parts of that, you're doing good for Chicago, but also this is a network where we wanna have people that were in the inaugural cohort come back and talk with the second cohort and the third cohort. And so that hopefully is something where those cohorts continue to have great value across each other. Many ways, like what Cranes has already done with 40 Under 40 and other networks where, you know, there is that synergy and connection across uh, the generation, so to speak. Uh, but uh, Jim, let me turn it over to you on that part. Yes, uh, thank you. And I, and I think uh, we share the same sort of outcome, you know, the, the main goal of this being that uh, we hope that the fellows, and you know, uh, gain the knowledge to to help you know help improve you know they go out in the world and the, the the greater region and 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 help the region in multiple ways and stay connected as Seth said really important to their fellow uh, in the in the in that cohort but then to also uh, as our as our two guests today uh, have done to uh, continue that you know, a knowledge sharing uh, with, with future cohorts. I will say from Crane's standpoint too, you know, we view this as we do some of the other sort of civically minded programs that we, uh, we run from a journalistic standpoint, like the Crane's Forum and Equity, that, uh, you know, our journalists are participating in this program uh, along with the Graham School, but also, you know, they're listening 
in these sessions. And so from that, from these sessions, the hope is that we are hearing uh, different viewpoints on uh, these issues, uh, you know, that, that we face as a city, and that helps shape our journalism when they come back. Um, you know, and, and, and the hope is that, you know, as, as we continue to cover a lot of these similar issues, that we're getting a, a more well-rounded picture uh, for the reporters to, to really uh, ask the right questions. Any other comments on that front? Well, so we have a final question here in the chat from Denise Turner. Could you share a bit about how you're evaluating applications from potential fellows? Uh, and Conway, do you want to share any thoughts on the evaluation side uh, for the applications? Uh, so, yes, yeah, so we are, again, are hoping to get applications in by mid-month. Um, I will actually um, drop into the chat uh, the link to the application form just so you can take a look there. Um, I would say, you know, beyond the kind of wh where you are and what you do, um, to really be thoughtful about the three questions that we ask that kind of get into the meat and potatoes of why you're interested in the program and what you think will come out of it. And then we'll be looking at those responses and also trying to weigh the balance of industries um, and um, companies that people are um, working in to make sure that we have a balanced cohort of sectors and voices um, and a diverse group of folks to be in this next cohort. Great. Well, I know we are beyond the promised time since we aimed for 45 minutes. Uh, please know we are respectful of your time and we are very careful to end our sessions on time each month. Uh, we look forward to your candidacies and to further conversation. Uh, we'll make sure in the follow-up email uh, that you have Conway's email for any questions that may come up. For now, let me just thank you on behalf of Cranes and UChicago for coming. Uh, the fact that you're here means you care deeply about the future of our region. We care deeply about the future of our region, and we're grateful to be in partnership, whether through this program or other endeavors in that so thank you, and uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation with many of you offline. Have good afternoons.